Creepy things happening on horror movie sets isn't a new thing. Just ask the crew who made The Exorcist or Poltergeist. But you won't believe what happened during the filming of Five Nights at Freddy's. The first Five Nights at Freddy's video game was released in 2014 and spawned a massive media franchise thanks to the strength of its novel approach to horror. One of its core elements is its cast of creepy animatronic humanoids, akin to a dilapidated Chuck E. Cheese band come to life with murderous intent. The Five Nights at Freddy's movie that premiered on October 27th adapts these characters for the first time to the big screen. Doing so, it turns out, caused a particularly creepy moment on set. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, director Emma Tommy recounted how she sometimes witnessed firsthand the animatronics moving on their own. Each animatronic was operated by a puppeteering team, such that different puppeteers controlled a single mechanism each. On one occasion, she recalled seeing an animatronic's eye twitch. The puppeteer in charge of that eye claimed that she wasn't responsible for the twitch, suggesting the animatronic moved on its own. On the heck? Tommy said, We embraced the quirks when they would do stuff that we didn't necessarily command them to do exactly. We sometimes thought it was gold and used it, so it was super fun in that way. It felt like a real live element. Based on these comments, it seems that shots of this happening are actually in the final cut of the film, which is pretty cool. Just prior to the movie premiering, Bloody Disgusting interviewed Robert Bennett, who's credited as the film's project supervisor and lead designer. Bennett works for Jim Henson's Creature Shop, the company responsible for iconic puppets in numerous films and TV shows, including The Muppets and The Dark Crystal. Bennett happened to corroborate Emma Tommy's account of the puppets sometimes moving on their own. However, he claimed to understand what caused this to happen, demystifying some of the onset creepiness. He explained, I know that there were several times where there would be a signal between one of the remote controls and a servo would glitch, and Emma would be like, oh my god, that's so amazing, can we do that again? Well, we'll try. He went on to explain that the Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics were designed so that they could appear intentionally glitchy when necessary. Filmgoers, then, may not be able to tell the difference between moments where the puppets legitimately act on their own and instances where the puppeteers are in command of some of their creepier movements. Thanks for the heads up. In an interview with Inverse, Emma Tommy discussed how requirements unique to filming mechanical puppets impacted day-to-day -day operations on the Five Nights at Freddy's set. Operating large animatronics, it turns out, isn't easy. She said, Getting the animatronics up on their feet and then giving them the breaks they need so they don't overheat, or so that the suit performer has proper breaks, all of that takes up so much time. By the end of the shoot, we were a well-oiled machine. Tommy went on to explain that there were distinct versions of each animatronic character designed to address the requirements of different scenes throughout the film. Some versions were entirely animatronic, whereas others functioned partially as suits for stunt performers, allowing them to move the characters from inside. Certain incarnations of Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy specifically could even fit two stunt performers at a time. She said, It was a mashup of a bunch of different techniques, all of which Jim Henson's Creature Shop brought to life in the most exquisite way. Given each puppet's complexity, it's unsurprising they didn't always function according to plan. Fortunately, times when the animatronics would move on their own didn't seem to derail filming, but rather added to their distinctly unsettling appearances.